Because you're maybe, totally maybe, guilty. Maybe, you're guilty. Maybe, you're guilty. Maybe. Because you support Donald Trump. Maybe and Donald Trump caused, has done 2,000 times worse maybe, and you know it. You maybe, won't even run it on this show. Okay. Because he is a monster. And he tried to terminate our Constitution. He tried to steal an election. I've never seen anyone so despicable in American politics. And by the way, there's another reason why I'm angry at him. Because I'm a populist. And he took populism and he perverted it to just turning into his own personal con. He's a, such a slimy con man. I loathe him. Everyone should vote against him. He's one of the worst people I have ever seen in politics, and I'm not going to let him terminate the Constitution or destroy this democracy. You see what Senk Uyghur appeared as a guest on Piers Morgan Uncensored to debate a panel of right-wing figures, including Candace Owens, Blackwater founder Eric Prince, and the show's host, Piers Morgan. The discussion centered around the rise of violent rhetoric in the country and its impact, which naturally led to a heated exchange. With Uyghur going head-to-head -head against this conservative-leaning panel, the conversation quickly became intense. Let's dive into this interesting debate and see how it all unfolded. The outcome of the US presidential election will have massive implications for America and for the world. The candidates could not be further divided on issues like immigration, the economy, and the role America should play in restoring peace. Make no mistake, this election is transformatively significant. It might be one of the most significant, in fact, in our lifetimes. But it's not existential. Kamala Harris is not an actual communist. Donald Trump is not an actual fascist. And no matter what happens in the next four months, a new president will be sworn into office in January next year. Just one day after a second attempt to assassinate Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton said this. And I don't understand why it's so difficult for the press to have a consistent narrative about how dangerous uh, Trump is. Uh, you know, the late great uh, journalist Harry Evans uh, you know, one time uh, said that, uh, you know, journalists uh, should, you know, really try to achieve objectivity. And by that, he said, I mean, they should cover the object. Well, the object in this case is Donald Trump, uh, his demagoguery, his uh, danger to our country and the world and stick with it. Well, that narrative is dubious and the timing was appalling. The media can be accused of many ill deeds. But failing to have a consistent narrative about Donald Trump is not one of them. This montage has now been viewed more than 30 million times in the aftermath of the latest attempted shooting. Excuse the poor quality, but the point is obvious. Well, the full version goes on and on and on. Of course, it's not difficult to find examples of Donald Trump saying outrageous things too. But there's no real value in me highlighting them because they play on the biggest TV news shows all day, every day. You will have already seen them. Everybody has. And right now, it's Democrats pushing the narrative that Trump, and only Trump, is to blame for the simmering and, in some cases, exploding tensions in American politics. Those tensions have almost got him killed, not once, but twice, in just two months. Surely enough is now enough. There are many unanswered questions about Donald Trump's security. There's a very live debate about who is to blame for this dangerously febrile atmosphere and what should be done about it. I'm joined by the host of The Candice Owens Show on Spotify and Rumble, Candice Owens, the founder and CEO of The Young Turks, Cenk Yuga, and former Navy SEAL, author and founder of military contractor Blackwater, Eric Prince. Well, welcome to all of you. Um, Cenk Yuga, there's a lot going on. I mean, the, the news cycle right now feels slightly insane. You know, you've got Donald Trump nearly assassinated again, twice in two months now. What do you make of it? Okay, first of all, on Donald Trump, what do you want me to do? The guy uh, did a coup attempt. He had fake electors, not even his own electors. You have your own slate of electors. He didn't use them because they said, this is unconstitutional and illegal. You lost the election. And he said, all right, you can get in fake electors. Let's do a coup attempt here. Let's have them bum rush the Capitol. And then that'll create enough confusion that we can bring it back to the states and the Republicans will cheat for us. They even wrote it in a book. Then he said we should terminate the Constitution because he lost the election. So what do you want me to do, Piers? The guy hates democracy. He's a dictator wannabe. So, okay, should you shoot at him? Of course not. Any action that is physical like that or violent is a surrender in the intellectual uh, field of, of debate and ideas. So it's a terrible idea. It's immoral, etc. But I'm not going to let up on Donald Trump for one second rhetorically because he is a monster 
and he tried to terminate our Constitution. He tried to steal an election. I've never seen anyone so despicable in American politics. And by the way, there's another reason why I'm angry at him, because I'm a populist, and he took populism, and he perverted it to just turning into his own personal con. He's a, such a slimy con man. I loathe him. Everyone should vote against him. He's one of the worst people I have ever seen in politics, and I'm not going to let him terminate the Constitution or destroy this democracy. You see, what I find extraordinary, Cenk, is you haven't even given it a beat since he nearly had his brains blown out on Sunday on a golf course. Let's take a moment to look at the narrative Piers Morgan is presenting here, that Donald Trump was almost assassinated in this second incident. But in reality, no shots were fired, and the man was stopped and arrested before anything could happen. He never had a clear line of sight or fired a weapon. Can this really be considered an assassination attempt if nothing actually occurred? In the US, someone being arrested with a gun isn't exactly uncommon. The second point is that Senk Uyghur made it clear he denounces violence. He also stated that Trump is a dictator wannabe who tried to overturn the election. Despite him openly condemning violence, the other MAGA panelists, including Piers Morgan, seem to brush that off and continue focusing on painting the left as violent. Even though Uyghur clearly expresses his stance against violence, it seems like that part of the conversation is being ignored. Did he ever give a beat when he constantly talks about violence? Hey, if someone takes out somebody from with a stretcher, I'll pay the legal bills. Ha ha ha, attack people. Oh, my political opponents, I'm going to jail them. I'm going to attack them. Well, to them. be clear, oh. you're, well, hang on, hang on. To be clear, you're trying to equate him making a joke about maybe slapping or punching someone in a crowd. Another tactic often used by MAGA supporters and what Piers Morgan is doing here is brushing off any incendiary or violent remarks from the right, including Donald Trump, by saying it was just a joke. Can't you take a joke? Recently, during a debate, Trump spent a lot of time promoting conspiracy theories, like post-birth abortion, which doesn't exist, and claims about Haitians eating people's pets. Yet, despite all this, it's the left that is labeled as having the violent rhetoric. It just doesn't add up. With someone oh, can I make a joke with about someone taking an AK Trump across the face? Well, hang on, was somebody can I make actually, that joke? Was somebody can actually, I make that joke, Pierce? Well, hang on, somebody actually shooting him on a rally stage and then very nearly shooting him on a golf course with an AK-47. Do you not see the difference? So, Piers, those are terrible actions. So what am I, I'm asking you a literal question. What do you want me to just go? Could you give it oh, a okay, beat? now Donald Trump's I mean, Jake, a good, Jake, hold on, let me finish the question. Jake, on a let me human finish the question. level, Donald on Trump's a, human a good level. guy. Donald Trump loves democracy. Donald Trump, no, Donald Trump's still the same monster he was yesterday. So I hate that people are shooting at him. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. It's immoral. It's well, wrong. Why would you I be can't surprised? Condemn it any stronger. Why would you but be I'm surprised? I'm not going to tell you that Donald Trump is a decent man. But Jake, when why he's would a you be a grotesque human Jake, being? Why would you be surprised? that people are taking drastic action. Unhinged people with unhinged brains who are listening to constant rhetoric from you people. You didn't answer the question. Well, what do you on. want me to do? You hang want on. me to uh, politically well, I'm surrender, asking, right? I'm asking you a question. Do you not consider for a moment that within 48 hours, you're still saying monster, demagogue, dictator, blah, yes. blah, 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 that's blah. Because that's because that's who he is. Yes, but this is what so is affecting... So you want me to lie? Yeah, because Tr Piers, tell me this. Because do you Jake, want me to lie? Let me finish. Let me finish. The shooter at the golf course, specifically in his recent social media posts, parroted Kamala Harris, saying that he was effectively an existential threat to democracy in America. You're doing the same. Does, does nothing no, make you pause? You're insane. Hillary Clinton's you're doing insane. the same. Trump does it 2,000 times worse. So, so, and you, so, because, and, and Piers, so because you think he you, does so it, your, your you should do it too. Is, shouldn't, your great idea is Democrats shouldn't, your great idea is Democrats shouldn't campaign against your beloved Donald Trump because some moron, mentally unstable guy took a shot at him. Okay, or two of them did. You know what? I, I can protect Donald Trump. Ban assault weapons. That'll protect Donald Trump way more than any of, oh, the, say nice things about him now that some lunatic took some shots at him. Here, let me do, be super clear. If you're on the left, I know the right-wingers love their guns and Second Amendment remedy, and they've been riled it up to do violence nonstop. But if you're on the left and you do any violence, you are not one of us. You're a stupid person who does nothing but uh, make uh, a worthy cause look immoral with your insanity. So, once again, Sank Uyghur is clearly and explicitly denouncing violence. But Piers Morgan, 
Candace Owens and Eric Prince seem to ignore that and stick to their narrative that it's really the left that's violent. No matter how clearly Uyghur expresses his position, they continue to focus on portraying the left as the problem in their rhetoric. It's hard to see how Uyghur could be any more straightforward than he's already being in this exchange with Piers Morgan. Is that clear enough? Or maybe, maybe, when they constantly hear on the airways people like you and Hillary Clinton and others constantly depicting Trump as an existential okay, threat to democracy guilty, in America. Piers, you're maybe, totally maybe, guilty. Maybe, you're guilty. Maybe, you're guilty. Maybe. Because you support Donald Trump. Maybe and Donald is, Trump has, has done 2,000 times worse maybe, and you know it. You maybe, won't even run it on this show. Okay. You won't even run it on this show because Donald Trump, what he says is so much worse than anything a Democrat has ever said about him. So you won't even run it on this show. So that's it. Are you telling Donald Trump, you better shut up. You better not say any of those gross things that you always say. You know that he joked about smashing Nancy Pelosi's husband's head in with a hammer. Yeah, and the truth One is, One of his Cenk, lunatic fans Cenk, tried to murder Nancy Pelosi's yeah, husband, and, and, Cenk, and he's like, ha, ha, it's so funny. Here's Do the you problem. know that when they try to murder his vice president, here's the problem, he then Cenk. turned around and said he deserved it. Here's he's the a problem. Psych, he's a psycho. Here's and the you problem. defend him every day, Pierce. Here's the problem. You have no idea what I've said about Trump when he's done these things. If you had, you wouldn't accuse me of not talking about them because so are you I always him do. To shut up? Because I always do. Are you telling me to in, shut up? I want to bring in Candace Owens here. Candace, look, we're 48 hours after the latest assassination attempt, and I'm listening to another liberal who I respect. I've had Schenken a lot on the show, absolutely losing his mind. I'm not sure why the timing even matters in this case. It feels similar to how, after school shootings or mass shootings, when people call for action on gun control, the right often responds by saying, now isn't the time, or it's inappropriate to talk about this right now. So are we just supposed to ignore all the rhetoric from Trump, MAGA, and right-wing figures because this incident happened a few days ago? What's the appropriate time frame to start discussing all the outrageous things Donald Trump says? It seems like a way to avoid addressing the real issues. Um, what I make of all of this is that if you are going to legitimately tell people that someone is a monster, that somebody is a dictator, that somebody is literally Adolf Hitler, if you're going to tell people that this person is a constant threat, why wouldn't somebody try to eliminate that threat? If this situation had been reversed and I had just watched somebody try to shoot Kamala Harris, I would be definitively saying how wrong it was. I would be saying to people that despite the fact that I do not want her to be president, of course, she is not so much of a threat that she needs to be shot. They don't stop this rhetoric because they do not want these assassination attempts to stop on Donald Trump. And I want to be very clear. The circumstance that we find ourselves in in the West is one of remarkable privilege. And when you're in times of remarkable privilege, it creates a, a, actually an issue of having a lot of weak men, right? Weak men are the ones that are going out here <laughs> like proclaiming Trump. that Donald Trump is a threat, complain, proclaiming that Donald Trump is somebody that is a dictator because they've never had real conflict in their lives. And you're about to see that example right now, the difference in the demeanor between someone like Cenk and Eric Prince, who I greatly respect, and who is somebody who has seen real conflict and understands what real threat is, right? He understands real threat. Cenk is somebody that grew up, obviously, with a silver spoon in his mouth. He's never had to fight for anything in his life and has never had to put his life before somebody else's. So it's very easy for him to behave like this, to behave demonstrably like a like a toddler who is throwing his toys out of the pram when he doesn't get what he wants. And so he he heightens his rhetoric and says, why am I not getting what I want? This man's a dictator. This man's a threat. And he's not being realistic. And it's it's embarrassing to our country, whether it was it. a person on the you right or the left. You guys haven't addressed it at all. Who, uh, Chank, Chank, I promise you are capable he of He wants to terminate the Constitution, yourself. so you like that? As somebody else speaks. You know, when I look at what's happened here, there are lots of strands to what's going on. And we'll come to the security aspect around Trump, which I find pretty scary, actually, that twice people have, with extraordinary ease, got into positions to assassinate him in the space of eight weeks, which I just find quite remarkable and shocking and shameful and a disgrace that the Secret Service has allowed that to happen. But before we get to that, this whole... They saved his life. Yeah, well, they didn't save his life. They put him in a position where his life nearly got taken. Nothing actually happened. The guy was there, and the Secret Service stopped him before anything could escalate. He didn't fire a shot, and he never even had a line of sight on Trump. So how can anyone say that the Secret Service didn't save him? 
This claim by Piers Morgan just seems completely over the top. Didn't and even still check, spreading conspiracy theories. They didn't theories. even check the perimeter of the golf course before he was exposed for four hours on that course eight weeks after he was shot. It is unbelievable off that shot. anyone from Thank the Secret, Secret Service, Service for would claim Donald anything Trump. but a dismal failure of their preparation to protect the president, in my opinion. But we'll come to that. Eric, what, what do you make of this debate, which is raging right now on, on, in this debate now, about the rhetoric and the responsibility of people who are on the airwaves, who are in public life, to dial down the rhetoric? Look, like the video clip you opened with, there's an enormous amount of apocalyptic language spoken by the left, call it, saying he must be eliminated, he is Hitler, and that unleashes every left-wing crazy to authenticate themselves by saying, I'm going to be the hero. This guy, this Ruth guy on Sunday, who is there for 12 hours stalking Donald Trump, with a high-powered rifle with a scope, with ballistic plates up against the fence. And what did he have up there? A GoPro. Why? He was trophy hunting. He wanted to be the savior of the left to say, I'm the one that killed Donald J. Trump. Mm. Trophy hunting, saying, for people like you responding to words that you're putting out there. Why else would he have a GoPro? No, no, he wanted to get famous. You're totally right about that, Eric. Uh, so, And I hate that. Uh, but the, the way that this whole thing has been framed as if the right wing doesn't do rhetoric that is 10,000 times more dangerous and violent over and over again. Trump's fans sent pipe bombs to every one of his enemies. Trump fans hit Nancy Pelosi's husband in the head with a hammer and Trump never even denounced it. How Candace Owens just squints and smirks as if none of these incidents ever happened. Did they forget about what happened to Nancy Pelosi's husband? They act like it didn't happen at all. Meanwhile, Trump constantly says that Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, and now Tim Walls are destroying the country, calling them communists and Marxists. He labels the media as the enemy of the people. And yet Candace Owens, Eric Prince, and Piers Morgan act like Trump is just a regular politician, ignoring the fact that he's stirring up hate and riling up his base. It's crazy that they continue to paint the left as the violent ones when Trump is using violent rhetoric on a daily basis. He laughs about it. So if we were using the okay. Trump standard, we'd laugh about him getting shot at. But I'm not as disgusting as Donald Trump is. Nancy Pelosi's husband had an interlude with some bizarre gay lover. That had, that, oh, trust trust me, he, that was he wasn't on the right. Oh, my God. I'm on he here with on lunatics. Right. I'm on here with lunatics and he conspiracy wasn't on the theorists. Right. I can't he believe lived, he just he said he that. Lived, and you're saying LGBT that the guy who smashed Paul Pelosi's head in wasn't on the right? Is that what Candace Owens no, the lunatic just said? Okay, <laughs> just so you know, curious, if you're come on here somebody with, else a lunatic, I mean, these right you shouldn't be behaving like nuts. one in the process. When you say, but Absolutely Cheng, 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 when They're saying things that sound completely insane. How is there anything wrong with Senk Uyghur calling them out for being nuts? You have Eric Prince here throwing out a conspiracy theory about Nancy Pelosi's husband trying to downplay the fact that he was attacked and hit in the head with a hammer. What else can you call them but nuts when they're pushing these kinds of narratives? So I am loud and aggressive. Shank Uyghur may be passionate in his delivery, but he's speaking truthfully. He's not ranting or throwing out conspiracy theories like the right-wingers often do on Piers Morgan Uncensored. His points are based on facts, unlike the constant stream of baseless claims we frequently see from the other side on this show. Candace Owens just said that the attacker of Paul Pelosi was not a right winger when he is a Donald Trump fan and a deep right winger. And Eric Prince, the lunatic, had uh, said that he was a gay lover of Paul Pelosi, a conspiracy theory so unhinged that I, I how am I supposed okay. to respond to it? You can't have a rational discussion with people who don't believe in facts and logic. Piers, are you agreeing with these two lunatics that he was not a right winger? You should have a little and that bit he was more some respect sort of gay than to refer to Eric, Eric Prince as a lunatic. He served our country. Just because someone has served the country doesn't mean they're immune from being a conspiracy theorist. In this case, the guy is clearly pushing a conspiracy theory, regardless of his past service. Mercenary and a disgusting guy, by the way. How many people got, did you get you killed? Uh, innocent people in Iraq, Eric. How many people did you have mowed down in Iraq, Eric? You know, going back to your topic, Pierce, um, 
perhaps it's time to bring back 19th century behavior, which maybe we had a more civil society then, if people are going to throw all kinds of bombastic language, they do so because they do it without consequence. In the 19th century in the UK, people would call them out for a duel. It doesn't have to be to the death. It could be swords. It could be pugil sticks. Maybe that would make for a more polite society. I don't know. I'm ready to go there. You see that? Piers, you see that? Who's the first to threaten violence? Of course, Eric from the right wing. Yeah, but, Whereas okay, I but, denounce but Cheng, violence. Cheng, I denounce it strongly and loudly. And but you Cheng, heard it with your own but Cheng, ears. But Cheng, what I don't think you appreciate is how ranting incendiary rhetoric of the kind you've unleashed so far in this debate yourself can, with an impressionable, unhinged person who believes everything you're saying about Trump, as Candace said, why wouldn't that person think to themselves, yeah, we've got to get rid of him. We've got to stop him. Okay. So my question for you is, if you can't even dial it down within 48 hours of a second assassination attempt on Trump's life, when can you? So, Piers, now let's have an intelligent conversation. Uh, Hold on. About where are the lines? Where are the lines? So, can wait, he asked me a question. Where are the lines? So, when you say, when Trump says these incendiary things that are, that uh, encourage violence, including laughing at smashing the head in of a political opponent's husband, that that's what? Is that fine? Or he's bad too. Well, is How it fine? long does he have to pause is it saying fine? violent things? Listen, I've criticized Trump for lots of his incendiary language over the years. But as far okay. as I know... So how long hang on, should he hang stop? Hang on. So far as I know, he's ever called one of his opponents Adolf Hitler. Donald Trump has repeatedly called his opponents enemies of the people and accused them of destroying America, labeling them as Marxists, communists, and socialists. He's made all sorts of inflammatory remarks including some pretty extreme statements about immigrants, like the recent claim that they're eating people's pets. His rhetoric is filled with harsh and divisive language, targeting both his political opponents and immigrants. So, first of all, I've never called him Hitler, but I love Sandra Day O'Connor's quote about, uh, it was about Bush and Cheney at the time, uh, about fascism. She said, we've got to uh, be careful of these beginnings so that we don't get those endings. So what I'm worried about is a guy who says that he loves dictators and writes love letters to them, and that he loves it when everybody has to stand up and applaud and no one can din- uh, can disagree with the leader of the country. He loves it. He thought we should terminate the Constitution. When they said to him, hey, they're trying to murder, your fans are trying to murder your own vice president. He told Mark Meadows, his chief of staff, he deserves it. I have to tell people the reality about Donald Trump. So, Piers, what do you want me to do? Take a 48-hour break, a 72-hour break? Or maybe do you want me to take a month and a half of a break of criticizing Donald Trump so he can win the election? It was interesting watching CNN yesterday. You are such a radical. I I do genuinely feel uh, very apprehensive about what is happening and what may happen. Um, And I dread to think what would happen in America if somebody did actually assassinate Donald Trump, as they are repeatedly trying to do. Yes. I I mean, I was completely underwhelmed by the immediate reactions, even from Kamala Harris, you know, just that simple tweet and violence has no place, which felt like it was copy and pasted from a PR firm. You know, there was no shock. There was no, this is absolutely wrong. There was no expressment of, of true frustration and disappointment, or even the recognition that that could be hurt, right? Like if you're, if you're trying to be a person that wants to be the president of the United States, this could potentially be you one day. So you should be outraged. I didn't sense that outrage from her. And rather what you, what you have correctly attest to is they just kept, going on with the rhetoric the very next day, which to me is signaling to their followers. Donald Trump continued with his usual rhetoric even after the first real assassination attempt. There was talk of a kinder, gentler Trump afterward, but that never really materialized. Maybe for a day or two, he seemed a bit more reserved, likely shaken by the incident, but soon enough, it was back to business as usual. His violent and divisive rhetoric didn't stop and he continued to push the same harsh messages. One of the things that's really frustrating, I think, for a lot of people is to watch the way the media is is constantly allowed to detach themselves from the consequences of what they say, which is to say that somebody shoots up and tries to shoot a president and the media is like, well, I was just calling him Hitler, but I never said to anyone that they should go shoot someone. And like I said earlier, the same media that Donald Trump, Candace Owens and many Republicans on the right consistently refer to as the enemy of the people. 
to when you are saying Adolf Hitler is taking the stage, when you are saying that you, we are going to completely lose democracy, which is so far from reality. It's, it's, it's embarrassing for Cheng to say that because we don't have to imagine Trump as president. He already was for four years. People were living very well. Um, the economy was doing very well. And so this rhetoric may have made sense in 2016. It doesn't make sense now in 2024. And so it's, it's frustrating to see that. And I think what is good, though, is to allow people around the world to get this insight into what's happening in America, because you hear the left constantly purporting to be the side of peace, right? And then you watch someone like Cenk, right? And then you listen to people that are on the right, the awful people on the right. You listen to Eric Prince, you listen to me, and you're able to really comprehend who are the radicals in American society, because you can scream peace, you can scream, oh, we love is love all day, but you hear their rhetoric within 24 hours after a former president was almost shot and they never dial it down. I mean, these people I want and encourage violence all the time. You see, Cheng, here's the problem. If this was Joe Biden or Kamala Harris, who had had two attempts on their life in eight weeks, the idea that you would not, if anyone on the Republican side used the kind of enraged, ranting rhetoric you've deployed in this debate today within 24 hours of it happening, that you would, you would go completely nuts at the Republicans for doing that. Okay. So my thing for you sure. is you seem to think that the justification for all your rhetoric is that, well, Donald Trump does it. And that's kind of like the old school playground thing. Well, they, they did that so I can do it. Where's your own moral line? Where's your line that says okay. we're going to no, be no. better than that? If you genuinely believe so that is wrong, the incendiary rhetoric so is wrong. Peers. Why do you deploy it? So, Piers, no. The framing of this entire conversation is insane. So, it, if, you, if somebody was just watching this conversation, they would think that I ordered attack on the Capitol or that the left wing did. No, Donald Trump had a violent mob attack our Capitol, and then you make it seem like the left violence problem. And then I strongly and very loudly condemned any violence. Shooting at Donald Trump is the worst thing in the world. I can't be any clearer about it. But you don't any condemn, assassination attempt, you don't any condemn violence, any, any physicality. Hold on. You don't condemn Hold on. any of the incendiary I have rhetoric. Con let me finish my point. I condemn it as forcefully as I possibly can. And then what do the two right wingers do? They neither one of them condemned the attack on Nancy Pelosi's husband. Instead, they came up with crazy conspiracy theories. And what does that do? It encourages their fans to go, oh, yeah, well, it's not a big deal to attack our political opponents. It's not a big deal to attack the Capitol. It's not a big deal to send pipe bombs to Donald Trump's political opponents. So they encourage this kind of violence 24 7. And on January 6th, we saw it in spectacular fashion. And then you're trying to reframe the debate as, criticism of Donald Trump, legitimate political criticism of Donald Trump is somehow the, the thing that's causing political violence in this country? No, it is 98% right-wing political violence. The 2% where it's the left wing, I hate it, I despise it, I condemn it. All right, we're wrapping up here, but let's recap. Senk Uyghur, three times on this show with Piers Morgan, Candace Owens, and Eric Prince, clearly condemned violence, stating that it should never be done. He also brought up valid points about right-wing violence, particularly tied to Donald Trump and events like January 6th. Despite this, Candace Owens and Eric Prince just shook their heads as if Uyghur was saying something outrageous. As he mentioned, these figures often push conspiracy theories, something we've seen from many right-wing guests that Piers Morgan brings on. Yes, Cenk got heated and animated, but the truth is, he was speaking facts and consistently denouncing violence, something that many on the right refuse to do when it comes to right-wing violence or Trump's inflammatory rhetoric. What do you think? Do you agree with Schenk Uyghur in this debate, going up against a right-leaning panel, including Piers Morgan? Or do you side with the right-wing panel? Let me know in the comments. I love reading your thoughts on this topic. And if you enjoyed this content, please make sure to like and subscribe. Your support helps me create more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.